Okay, task number one, get this awful battery off. So we'll disconnect there and there, and I might take the whole lead off um, and sort that out because um, I might need to clean that up as well, that earth point. So, yep, get started on that one. Okay. Well, first design fault is that this clamp is sort of, the boot's in the way of the actual clamp bolt. Oh shit. I shouldn't really do that even with a dead battery. I should do the negative one first. So that would be wise. My camera angles are a bit skewed, but I'm only an amateur. Right, negative off. And then done. Right. Excellent. Now we need to take out that bolt down there, which I cannot access with this. That would actually help. Longer reach the clamp, which is quite tight. Yep, that's very tight. I might need some penetrating fluid. Ooh, you can hear that. Right a bone has not been moved in such a long time by pretty much every single part of this damn car. So I'll put that down. Must have one of these. You must have one of these. It's a lifesaver. I've got two of them to go on the bonnet. So move the battery out the way. This rubbish, shitty battery. We're now going to test it. Well, you know you've got a dead battery when even this doesn't work. It cannot pick up any voltage whatsoever. This battery is going in the bin. I'm just going to give these a bit of a clean up because these are really desperate here. Uh, next bit that I'm going to do is I'm going to start draining the oil. The oil drain plug is at the bottom. The um, the camera work may not be so good, so I'm not going to bother showing you that because the drain plug is a drain plug at the end of the day. The oil filter is mounted, I believe, somewhere down there, if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and then we're going to start draining one by one. We're going to take this off. There's just a clip. Uh, there's a clip here, and I'll take the whole air box and pop it off. And we'll uh, start digging in very nicely. Jack it off, make sure it's actually on. Jacking point, yeah, it's just you can see that, yeah, it's just gone on. So, I'll just pop this up as a quick lift jack. I'm just going to show you. Um, so, you've got your cap there. I mean, there is some scab, you see there, you've got some scabness in the usual place, but I don't think that's much at all. I've uh, got a lot of cobwebs down here, but it's really, really solid. Look at the cobwebs on that. So you've got your, you've got your, arm, chassis around, your arms there, but there's nothing much that concerns me. I'll tell you, this is absolutely nothing compared with the Focus. I'm really impressed. Uh, I mean, that's going to wash off well. And this is all going to be cleaned, treated, waxed, undersealed, you name it. So, yeah, oh, yes, that's going to be such fun to release on one day. It will need to be cut off anyway. I'd probably replace the exhaust all in one when if it goes because exhaust are a pain to do in single sections. It's never easy. Right, let's get and change that blasted engine oil. Uh, number one, oh, say change. Drop the engine oil because I'm not going to change it for quite a while. Mm, can't even see. But uh, always take the cap off beforehand and put it somewhere where you can't easily lose it so uh, and also the top tip is take the dipstick out because that o-ring on the dipstick actually prevents dust and air going down there so you've got a little vacuum developing now and then I'll show you the oil stop it yeah quite dark but yeah it's as i expected but strangely there's no antifreeze on the dipstick 
Uh, the automatic transmission fluid is just here. Uh, this thing is getting on my nerves, man. I'm gonna sort that out soon. Just leave it there. I mean, this, there is a bit of redness there, but it's turned to brown. That is not a good, that's not good. That's old oil. I just hope to God it hasn't damaged the transmission, but to be honest with you, it's just old oil. It's never been changed. Um, and the gearbox actually drove pretty nicely on the test drive around the industrial state. Um, I've got no issues with that gearbox. The only thing I noticed was when we put it in drive or uh, reverse, it didn't want to creep forward very much. Now, I might be comparing it to a torque converter conventional automatic. I'm not sure how these gearboxes are supposed to feel, so we're just gonna go with how it progresses and see where we go. Again, I can just, there has been some leaks here, but it, it looks to me like historical leaks. We'll soon find out. I've got to take, uh, I think I've got to take this tray off. So uh, we'll release it and then we'll uh, have a look underneath. Well, probably right. I'm going to take that um, drain plug out and we're going to get this shield off. Okay, I think the next shot will be of the oil coming out. Oh, Jesus Christ. It comes to something when you need a breaker bar to get um, a 15 mil um sump plug out just gonna pull this and get ready for the drip it's like watching paint dry isn't it guys wow well that definitely needs a change and I've got a feeling there is nowhere near enough oil coming out. Jesus, it looks it looks ready. Look at that. There. It looks just browny red. Are they sure they didn't put CVT fluid in the engine? Alright, now we've got to get that oil filter off. Apparently this panel is part of the um, inner wings. Well, that's really handy, that is. The um, plastic wings, so I'm going to... Get my oil filter tool on and we're going to take that off now. The good thing is about this is that the oil filter and the drain plug are in kind of the same place where oil would be dripping as opposed to the focus where the sump plug was at the back of the engine and the oil filter was at the front so you had to go to two different locations with your drain pan. I can just keep it here. Good bit of design. Oh my dear god that was hard. That filter was stuck on and look at the damage I've done to it. Uh, I've had to get some, maybe my oil, my oil filter tools struggle with that. I had to get the um, the old uh, mold grips on it. Uh, I've done it. It's loose now, so I can just twist it off. Oh, my God. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick I've got. And if you've got an air compressor, which I suspect a lot of you may have. Now, if you have one of these, you'll be very familiar with this technique. It has been used before. You just put an air line put it straight into the engine and it will blow the dregs of oil that are stuck at the bottom it's still dripping it could be messy and it will frequently travel along my arm we'll see how it goes mm, there's not a lot coming out you know there is not a lot. Oh, there it comes. No, we've blown air in. There it comes. That is the dregs. That is the dregs. And just keep doing that for the next 10 to 15 minutes and you'll get all the crap out. It's so tempting. To... Oh, jeez. The dust that came out of there. This is, this is dry, dry as a bone, the gearbox, dry as a bone. Oh, that's doing its thing, I came over here to have a look at this, and I thought I found my first hole, just here. But it turns out, 
I've just given it a wire brush. It's good, but it needs treating before that goes through. That could go through, give it 12 months, give it another winter. So, better get wire brush back. It's all good. That can be treated just about. I'm just having a good look at the back. It's just surface. I mean, this bit down here, now you can't see as much. It's like, it's like archaeology. Yeah, I've, I've just looked at this side as well. There is mud under these sill covers. I will have to get these off very, very shortly. But um, again, the other side, it's just... I know that I might do some digging, I might find some, I mean, oh, this dirt's been here years, it's going to need the biggest jet wash ever. Um, the train arm bushes are deteriorated, they have split from their mountain, but yeah, hopefully it'll pass an MOT, we'll get that sorted. Uh, well, that's not rust, it's just dirt. It's just, it's solid. I mean, I don't know if I've shown this to you properly, there you go. Scabby, scabby. I mean, even the brake pipes on that side and the fuel pipes, they're absolutely clean. I can't believe how clean it is. This is just dust. Um, I don't fancy changing this exhaust. This blooming flange looks, again, rounded bolts. So, lovely. That's going to be a lovely job for me to sort out in the future. Yes, nice. Really tidy. Rusty fuel tank, as usual. I suppose while it's dripping, I'll just... Clean up. Gee, I'll shove some air. It's perfectly safe to do this. Right, that should give it a bit more feed. I'm going to put that dipstick back in the engine. Uh, Leave the cap off for now. best way of doing it before I start draining the cooling which is the next job. Before I do that I'll just take the air box out. I've undone that clip and there's two bolts in it should um, theoretically pull out um, and then we'll take that off and then we've got a bit of better access then. Nice, should. Oh, yeah. Yeah well, time to disconnect everything. Clips have gone. Lovely. Out of the way and we've got better access to one heck of a big starter motor. I think they have bigger starter motors on the CVTs. And we'll start uh, getting a couple of radiator pipes on them. Now, I don't believe there's a drain pot, uh, a drain um, bung on these radiators, so you just take the bottom hose out. Easy enough. Right, I've managed to uh, get that under trough. I've just got to disconnect it on the sides. I've just taken the few bolts out and dropped it because I need access to the, uh, top, uh, the bottom radiator hose. Uh, you can see the mess I've made, but hey, um, yep, so we've had to drop that, ridiculously. It's part of the inner wings, the plastic arches, so uh, I'll take the whole piece off and then we'll drain the, um, drain the bottom hose. Lovely. Ah, oh, Jesus, you're going to think I'm an absolute idiot here. I've just spent the last five minutes trying to get that off with a 10 mil spanner, only to realise it's only a clip that you pull out with a trim tool. Ugh, I wondered why it wasn't coming out. Right. Junk pile at the moment until I can fix it up. Now we have better access down there to that Jubilee clip. I'm going to release that clip, pull it out and drain all the coolant. And I'm going to have to do a bit of releasing at the back, so I'm going to have a look in a second. It's all a learning curve. Clip's done, so if I can just pull... Done. 
that's not looking too bad you know it looks orange that does not look bad at all that's really good well, one thing I have discovered, and I can't show you from this position, but if we take you down here, there appears to be a bit of an oil leak. Now, I don't know where that's coming from. That could be anything from the cam uh, seals. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. It's all going to be cleaned. That oil is still coming out. So, uh, we'll just let that finish its job over there, and we'll pull some more hoses to get it out before we do a flush. Just gonna take a bunch of random hoses. This goes to the, I think that's the temperature sensor, the current temperature sensor. I'm gonna take the hose off here. I'm just gonna take a bunch of hoses off, to be honest. I need to find the heater hoses and do that as well. It has to be for a... And as evidenced, you can see, you see, I don't know if you can see that, the sludge at the bottom. That is all going to be cleaned out. Right, having totally failed and given up with that at the moment, there's lack of access, but I will get it off eventually. I'm just going to flush through with a hose and we're hopefully going to get some decent results. So, bear with. Okay, lovely. So, top hose and see if we coming out of every artist. I'm just going to keep doing this for quite a while, so I might be some time guys. Also try a bit of back flushing and the amount of crud that has come out is ridiculous. I'll have to show you in a second. Look at this. That is about three or four bowls worth of water that has come out of this car. I think most of this has come out of here and it actually looks much cleaner at the bottom, but there's still crud in the system, so it'd just be a case of flushing it again I'm not going to use any flushing agents um, I'm just going to use pure water to be honest with you because you know over time there will be stuff in the system that will still be there but I think most of that has maybe come out either the radiator or I think that to be honest so we'll just keep flushing it um, oil is almost done I can't get to the blooming heater hoses because the hose clamps I can't you can see but the hose clamps are Oh, they're really difficult to get to if this ECU wasn't in the way. Um, but, oh well, we'll get to it at some point and we'll take that hose off. Um, good, so we'll press on. Now I know there were those of you who said I shouldn't really without covering up the electrics, but to hell with it, I've just literally just shoved a load of water at the back. I've avoided obviously the ECU and the alternator. Major electric starter motors already be wet as it is. Uh, but it's looking really nice. I see it's really come up with just a, a slight wash. I mean, that's a bit crudy. Well, that's come up nicely as well. It's just... I'll take you through the arch, actually. You can see inside here. I mean, this has come up really well as well. Uh, the wishbone's looking fine. It's clean, you know. There's just areas inside here. I might need to look at the seams where they can go, but we'll get some degrease and then do a proper job. Um, this yeah you know, this is congregated stuff in the corners this is what you don't want so yeah really good so far so good and that is where we leave this episode part two who knows we'll just go from one thing to the next but at least i know most of the crud is out the system now um to form a, a blank canvas which is what i want for the car it's going to have to be a blank canvas inside the engine bay uh, in a lot of places back to basics so next time guys see you soon